Hi, I'm Pete Gallagher, and in this module we're going to learn how to control the Raspberry Pi GPIO with .NET Core. We'll learn how to interact with the inputs and outputs on the Raspberry Pi, we'll look at some basic electronics, and then we'll look at which NuGet packages we're going to need to be able to control our inputs and outputs. We'll begin with a simple app, and then we'll add some code that'll allow us to flash an LED. GPIO, or General Purpose Input Outputs, can be used for things like status indication, or perhaps smart device control, or building monitoring, where we're looking at temperature and humidity sensing, or perhaps driving servos for robotics. GPIO is split into inputs and outputs. For inputs, it could be things like buttons, or sensors, or serial devices. For outputs, it could be things like LEDs, servos, or displays. Let's look at a simple circuit. Here we have an LED, a resistor, and a button. The LED is connected to pin 10 on our Raspberry Pi through a resistor. The other side of the LED is connected down to ground. The button is connected to pin 26, and once again, the other side is connected to ground. It's worth talking about GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Your Raspberry Pi has a set of pins numbered 1 to 40. Each of these pins has a specific purpose. We have power, we have general inputs and outputs, we also have serial ports, such as SPI or I2C. Finally, we have things like PWM, which allows us to control servos. There are actually two different numbering schemes in use on the Raspberry Pi. The first is known as the board numbering scheme, and that's shown here closest to the pins. The square pin at the top left hand corner is pin 1. To its right is pin 2, and below that 3 and 4. There's also a BCM numbering scheme, and this is referencing the BCM chip which drives the I.O. on the Raspberry Pi. I prefer to use the board numbering scheme because we simply need to count the pins on the Pi to be able to figure out which pin to connect to, whereas with the BCM numbering scheme we then need to convert that to another number. Let's have a quick demo. We'll demonstrate how the GPIO works on our Raspberry Pi, starting with outputs, so that we can flash an LED. To do this, we'll start with a basic console application that we created in the previous module. We'll add in the system.device.gpio NuGet package, and then we'll add some code to flash an LED, before finally running it to see what happens. We return to the simple console application we created in the previous module. Rather than typing the code in manually, I've created it earlier. The first thing we can see from this example code is that on line 2 we're using the system.device.gpio library. We actually need to install this into our application using the CLI. We can do this in PuTTY. To install a NuGet package with .NET Core's CLI we'd use the following command. .NET add package and then the name of our package, in our case system.device.gpio. We can see here that by adding the package this has been written to our csproj file. Let's return to our project code and have a look. And here we can see at the bottom of the file we have a new package reference for system.device.gpio. On line 3 we're including system.threading. We'll be using this as we need a delay between turning our LED on, back off and back on again. Within our main subroutine, we're creating a GPIO controller called controller. We're passing in the pin numbering scheme of board. This is the pin numbering scheme I referred to in my slides earlier. The GPIO controller will be taking the heavy lifting of what we'll be doing in this module to control the I.O. on our board. We leave in place our console write line of hello world so that when we run our application we'll see something happening no matter what happens on the actual board. On line 17 we're creating a pin variable and assigning 10 to it. This is the pin number we've connected our LED to on our board. Below that we're creating a light time variable and assigning 300 to it. This is a value in milliseconds which will become the delay between turning our LED on and off and back on again. On line 19 we're using the controller to open a pin and we're passing in our pin variable from above and setting that pin to a pin mode of output. This is because the Raspberry Pi will be outputting to the LED. 
Below, in a while loop, we use the controller to write a value to our pin. We write a value first of high, and then we use our light time variable to delay for 300 milliseconds, before once again using the controller to write to our pin a value of low. Finally, we wait another 300 milliseconds before returning to the top of the while loop. In essence, this will simply flash our LED on, off, and back on again when the loop returns to the top. Finally, we use the controller to close the pin, which allows that pin to be used elsewhere. Let's run the code and see what the LED does. We can run the code by issuing a .NET run, as we did in the previous module. And we can see we have Hello World. And looking at our board, we now have a flashing LED. In this module, we talked about the purpose of GPIO. We looked at some basic electronics and circuit design. We learnt how to add packages to our application, and we added the GPIO package. And then we looked at the code we use to control devices using .NET Core.